Hello and welcome to Tipsy Gaming. Today we're continuing to grow our grove in the Queen's Conservatory. We'll focus on how to optimize it once you've reached tiers 3 and 4. In case you missed the first video which focused on tiers 1 and 2, there'll be a link to that up in the corner or in the description down below. Speaking of down below, if you're a fan of sea shanties you should definitely come hang out with me on Twitch because chances are you'll hear one or two there while I play some games. Now back to the plants. First of all, you should get some pesticide because this garden has some bugs in it. Most notably, the icons on the wild seed don't always show the accurate duration or catalysts. Sometimes it just won't count the time down, don't worry though, it is continuing, or after collecting your rewards, the previous catalysts will still show up on the new wild seed even though they've expired, and no, you don't get the benefit from them. There have also been times in which hovering your mouse over the Queen's Conservatory icon in the Sanctum Report did not provide accurate information about what wild seeds are active, ready, or dormant. It's possible they fixed these by now, but I'm not entirely sure. But when you do unlock Tier 3, you access a quest to find another legendary spirit, this time by killing Devos in Spires of Ascension. Don't worry, it shouldn't matter what level you do this on. Place the spirit in the wild seed and after the appropriate amount of days, depending on which catalyst you used, which was covered in part one, Ulm of Meditation appears and sets up shop in your conservatory. This ancient deity sends you off to, you guessed it, meditate. First an Arden Wheel just outside the heart of the forest on this little bit of land. You'll know you're in the right place when you have a special action button show up. And don't forget to pet Gus while you're here. Next you'll be sent to a new location each week culminating in the achievement Meditation Master and the toy Mystical Orb of Meditation. At Tier 3, you also unlock a fourth Wild Seed plot here in the center, along with the associated Catalyst plot that has not already been unlocked. This means you now have three Wild Seeds with two Catalysts and one Wild Seed with one Catalyst plot. And in case you're wondering what this delicious concoction is, it's an Elderflower Gin Cocktail. Get it? Flower? Grove? Uh? Uh? Anyway, keep your eyes here for how to make it while I discuss Tier 4 and some tips on Catalyst placement. At Tier 4 you get a new quest for another legendary spirit, this time by completing the other side. Just like before, get the spirit, incubate it, and you will now have Leah the Curious hanging out in your conservatory. She will first send you to Frostfire Ridge, where you enter into a cave, not a pool of lava, to commune with the remains of a spirit. In other words, click on the bones. <laughs> Frosty will appear and shortly thereafter show up in your conservatory as well. Each week, Leah sends you on another quest and after doing this thrice, you will get the achievement All Spirits Great and Small. Tier 4 is also when you unlock your one and only wild seed with three adjoining catalyst plots. It's around this time that you start to feel stretched a little thin as far as spirits go because they seem to be in shorter supply than catalysts. Fortunately, this is also when you start getting additional spirits for doing your weekly quests in the Maw. So if you do them all regularly, you should be fine. But if it's not your thing, make sure you're snacking those spirits when they show up on your command table. Also, with the spirits rewarded from the Maw, sometimes it shows that it's an epic level spirit, but you still just get a rare one. It feels pretty buggy, and I hope they fix it to actually be an epic level spirit. As far as what to plant where, here is some information and a few tipsies tips I can offer. First of all, I previously said that I like to stack temporal leaves with green quality spirits to get them out of the way. I still recommend that, but only up to two catalysts. If you use it on the new wild seed with three catalysts, yes, you will reduce the incubation time down to one hour, which is great, but you will also be stuck with those catalysts for the full 12 hour duration, and you cannot change them. Personally, I prefer to use at least one wild seed root grain with my rare level spirits, so that wasn't exactly ideal. For me, one wild seed root grain and two wild night blooms seems to be the sweet spot for the three catalyst wild seed. This is because everything currently indicates that pets drop from one of the increased quality catalysts and cosmetic items and the Wakener's rune stag drop from two. I care more about getting pets than I do transmogs, so once I got them out, I went back to using just one. Also, I got a pretty hefty haul from using that combo once, including getting two eternal crystals. I have also now gotten both the Gulper and Snapper Soul Shape from my conservatory. Like the Wakener's Rune Stag, these only come from untamed spirits appropriately associated with Ardenweald and only require one Wild Seed Root Grain catalyst. 
but their chance of dropping does seem to increase if you're incubating a legendary spirit. But that's about it for today. If you have any questions or think I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below or over on Twitch. Until next time, this has been Tipsy Gaming. I'm Tipsy. Please remember to drink and game responsibly.